Most people think ChatGPT is the shortcut, but if you're using it wrong, it's actually slowing you down. Ask it for help, and what do you get back? Generic fluff? That's because the truth is ChatGPT isn't magic. It's a mirror. It reflects the quality of your prompt. And if your prompt sucks, your results will too. That's the difference between using ChatGPT and mastering it. In this video, I'm breaking down the exact formula that turns ChatGPT into your highest performing sales assistant. Let's go. Hey there, everyone. I'm Jake Dawson, and I help businesses use ChatGPT and automation tools to seriously boost their sales. I've worked with over 50 clients and written thousands of prompts that have brought in tens of thousands of dollars in extra revenue. Today, I'm going to show you the exact ChatGPT prompt, the formula that I use to help my clients close more deals. This isn't theory. This is what real businesses use every day to write better sales copy faster. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to write prompts that actually work, ones that generate great sales content, uncover valuable customer insights, and spark smarter marketing ideas without wasting hours of going back and forth with AI. So if you've got a notebook nearby, grab it, because what I'm about to share could seriously shift how you run your sales process this quarter. Let's dive in. Oh, and a quick heads up. I put together a template with 15 proven prompts you can start using right away. The link's in the description. So make sure you check that out. All right, let's get the formula. The perfect ChatGPT prompt for business has six simple parts, task, content, exemplars, persona, format, and tone. And once you get this down, you'll start getting way better results, especially for sales and marketing. Let's start with the first part, the task. This is what you're asking ChatGPT to actually do. You need to start with a clear action and be super specific about the goal. If you just say something like, help me with sales emails, you'll get generic junk. That kind of prompt is why people think ChatGPT give boring results. Instead, say something like, write five follow-up emails for, for leads who didn't reply after a demo. All right, so here's this simple formula that I use for writing a strong task that gets great results in ChatGPT. Okay, so let me break that down in clear English. Start with a clear action word like write, create, generate, summarize, or draft. Then say how much you want, like three emails or one product description. Follow that with the goal, what are you trying to do? Book a call, sell a product, re-engage a cold lead. And finally, include one important detail that guides the focus, like a benefit, product name, or audience type. Here's a quick example. Write three follow-up emails to re-engage leads who didn't respond after a sales demo, focusing on how our software saves them time. That's it, clear, focused, and it gives ChatGPT exactly what the job is you want it to do. If you follow that format, you're off to a great start, even before you add all the extra layers like content or tone. Next up is context. This is where most people mess up. They give zero background and then they wonder why the results are off. ChatGPT, again, is not a mind reader. You have to feed it the details. For sales prompt, your context should include things like who your customer is, things like their job titles, age range, what they care about, where they are in the buying process. You know, are they just curious? Are they comparing options or are they ready to buy? What your usual conversion rates are so it knows what good looks like and the biggest pain points or objections your audience typically has. Here's an easy way to think about it. Imagine hiring a new sales rep. What would you tell them on day one so they don't lose that sale? That's what you should put in the context. Also, don't forget to mention your unique selling point. What makes your product or service different from the rest? ChatGPT can't highlight what sets you apart unless you tell it. Are you selling online? Add things like your pricing, what motivates your buyers, and what products they usually compare yours to. Here's the magic. When you combine a super clear task with solid context, ChatGPT gives you content that's sharp, useful, and actually sounds like you know what you're doing. And if you're doing this often, save your go-to context in a doc or a note so you're not writing it from scratch every time. Copy, paste, done. Next up are exemplars. Exemplars are basically cheat codes for ChatGPT. Think of them like training wheels. It's you saying, hey, this is what looks good. Do more of this. You're not just telling it what to do, you're actually showing it. And when you do that, the results go from meh to wow. Watch what happens when I give it an actual sales email that pulled a 45% reply rate. Then compare it to the same prompt without the example. The difference is night and day. You'll never write a prompt again without an example. 
All right, let's move on to one of my favorite parts, the persona. This is where the magic happens for sales. And most people forget this step and they end up with something that sounds like it came from a corporate brochure. You know, boring, generic, forgettable. But when you tell ChatGPT who to be, like write as our top performing SDR who always crushes quota, or speak like our CEO pitching investors, everything changes. It gets sharper, more confident, more specific. You go from bland to bold real fast. Let me show you a side-by-side -side example. Same product, same message, but one with no persona and one where I tell to speak like a senior sales rep who's been in the game for years. The second one sounds like someone who actually knows the customer and the industry. You feel it immediately. Now let's talk format and tone. You might think this stuff doesn't matter, but look, it totally does. If you don't tell ChatGPT how to structure the output or how it should feel, you're leaving money on the table. For example, I might say, hey, Format this as a five-part cold outreach sequence with subject lines. Make the tone friendly but confident, like a trusted advisor, not a pushy salesperson. That simple instruction can take your prompt from generic to gold. And by the way, if your audience doesn't like stiff, overly formal messaging, don't ask for that. Tell ChatGPT to write like someone your customers would actually want to talk to. You're not writing legal contracts here. You're trying to build trust and book calls. So don't skip format and tone. They are the finishing touches that make everything click. All right, now that you've got the full formula, task, context, exemplars, persona, format, tone, I'm going to show you how to bring it all together into one killer prompt. Let's do this live step-by-step. Step. Let's start with the first one. You want ChatGPT to write cold email subject lines. So here's the full prompt. Now, this prompt gives ChatGPT everything it needs to come up with subject lines that actually catch attention. You're not going to get generic clickbait. You're getting lines that feel like they've been written by someone who knows exactly what these CFOs care about, saving money and moving fast before the quarter ends. And when you give it an example, like that FinTech case study, it starts to pull inspiration from the kind of results your prospects want. It makes the subject lines feel real and credible. All right. Now let's look at follow-ups. These are for leads who visited your pricing page, but didn't take that next step and book the demo. Here's how the prompt is built. This one's all about striking the right tone. These people are interested, but they're not sold yet. So you're not going in with a hard pitch. You're just trying to open the door again, be helpful and show them that you're there if they need clarity. When you frame it this way, ChatGPT writes in a way that feels natural and respectful, like a quick message from someone who's actually paying attention, not a scripted robot follow-up. All right, now for the fun one, ads. You've got a new CRM and you want ad headlines that actually stop the scroll. So write a prompt that says, generate five ad headlines for a CRM that helps real estate agents follow up with leads and manage listings all in one place. Give it a solid example, like never miss a hot lead again, and then tell it to write like a marketing manager who's helped launch SaaS tools for real estate pros. Keep it simple, just one sentence headline options, and the tone, high energy, benefit driven, and easy to read. What comes out is pure gold. Headlines that actually speak to the pain points agents deal with every day, and that's the point. This formula works across all kinds of sales content, emails, ads, social posts, landing pages, you name it. Once you learn how to plug in each of the six parts, you can shape ChatGPT's output to sound like it was written by someone inside of your company, not some random internet assistant. And that's how you stop getting generic fluff and start getting content that actually moves the needle. And if you're thinking, okay, Jake, that sounds cool, but how do I build these prompts fast without rewriting them from scratch every time? I got you. Let's talk about how to take everything we just covered and make it ridiculously easy to reuse. Because let's be real, no one wants to rebuild a prompt from scratch every time they need a subject line or a follow-up message. Here's the move. Create one master prompt template with blank spots so you can quickly fill it in. Treat it like Mad Libs for sales content. You keep the bones of the prompt the same, task, content, exemplar, persona, format, and tone, and you just swap out the details, depending on what you're working on. This way, whether you're writing for cold emails, for a SaaS product, an ad company, for an e-commerce launch, you're not starting from zero. You're starting from a proven structure that already works. And once you've got the template built, now you can test it because great prompts aren't one and done. They get better through testing. 
Okay, let me walk you through the exact process we use with clients to improve results fast. We start with a solid baseline prompt using that six part formula. From there, we create three to five variations, but here's the key change only one thing at a time. Maybe try a new tone or a different persona or tighten up the format. Then run each version with real prospects and track what actually performs better. Not just vibes, real numbers. You measure stuff like open rates, reply rates, conversions, and sales speed. Then you double down on what works and toss what doesn't. It's not guesswork, it's a system. Build your template, test variations, and let the data guide you. It's fast, it's simple, and it works. Now, before we wrap up, I need to call out a few common mistakes that could completely derail everything we just talked about. Because even with a great formula, it's easy to mess this up if you're not careful. The biggest mistake I see, people assume ChatGPT just knows what you want. It doesn't. Unlike the real salesperson who understands your business, your product, your customers, ChatGPT starts with zero context. So if you don't give it that info, it's basically just guessing. So when someone types, write me a sales email, and they expect magic, they're asking ChatGPT to somehow know their industry, who they're selling to, what makes their product special, and how they sound as a brand all at once. Of course, the output is going to be generic. On the flip side, some people go too far the other way. I've seen teams paste their entire 30-page brand guide into a single prompt, and they wonder why the output is all over the place. Spoiler alert, more info doesn't mean better results. If it's not relevant to the task, it's just noise. Another big one is skipping the persona. If you don't tell ChatGPT who to be, it just defaults to boring. It writes like a polite intern who's trying really hard not to mess anything up. That's not what closes deals. I'll show you two versions of the same cold email, one without a persona and one where we told it to write like a senior account executive who's been doing this for years. The difference is wild. One sounds like it came from a template. The other sounds like it came from someone who actually knows the customer's world. And guess what? The one with the persona got way more responses. And here's a costly one I see all the time. Teams write a killer prompt, get awesome results, and then they don't save it. So the next time they need something similar, they have to start from scratch. It's like finding the perfect recipe and then just forgetting how you made it. Don't do that. Top performing teams build prompt libraries. They organize them by funnel stage, audience type, objection, content format, whatever helps them find and reuse the best results fast and they track which prompts actually perform. So they're not just guessing what works, they know. After rolling the system out with dozens of clients, I can tell you exactly who's getting the biggest wins. It's the teams that treat ChatGPT like a smart new sales rep, someone who needs a little training, a little structure, and a clear job to do. When you do that, I've seen conversion rates jump by 30 to 40%, no joke. And if you're wondering what that looks like in real numbers, Think about it this way. If your average sales rep spends four hours a day writing emails, proposals, and follow-ups, and you make them even 25% faster with this formula, that's an extra hour a day per rep spent actually selling. Multiply that across a 10-person team, and you're looking at 2,600 extra selling hours per year. That's not a small win. That is a game changer. Now, just to be clear, ChatGPT is not going to replace your entire sales strategy. It's not closing million dollar deals for you on autopilot, but what it can do is take up all the stuff that eats time, like personalizing outreach, writing follow-ups, creating proposals, analyzing transcripts, and do it way faster. Without losing quality, that saved time. And that's the real win, because now your team has more hours to do the stuff that actually moves the needle, talking to customers, building trust, solving problems, and that's where the real money is. At the end of the day, the edge isn't just having AI. Everyone has access to these tools now. Your edge is how well you use them. It's how well you guide the AI to do the right job for the right person at the right time. And that all comes down to one thing, your prompts. So now it's your turn to put this into action. Drop a comment below and tell me one sales task you're going to optimize first using this formula. Is it cold emails, product descriptions, maybe follow-ups or handling objections? Whatever it is, please post it and I'll go through it and personally reply to as many as I can. Also, I put together a downloadable template with 15 pre-built prompts based on everything we covered today. These aren't fluffy examples. They're the real ones my clients have used. The link's in the description inside my school community. So go and grab it and make it your own. 
And if you're really into this kind of stuff, make sure you're subscribed because I've got more coming. Over the next few weeks, I'm sharing a ton of advice on how to do smarter lead generation and how to automate your business without needing to hire a massive team. We're talking real workflows, real tools, and stuff you can actually implement, even if you're just getting started. Got a specific sales challenge you're dealing with right now? Drop your questions in the comments so I can spot it. I might even feature it in a future video and build a prompt live to solve it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm Jake Dawson once again, and remember, we're just getting started with what AI can really do. Oh, and before you click away, here's another video you'll probably wanna watch next. It's packed with even more tips to help you crush it with automation. See you there.